I'm hosting this week, and for a very special reason, we are here at the University of Alaska Anchorage for the annual Native Youth Olympics. The crowd is huge, and the contestants come from all over the state. They train hard. They take this very seriously. This is almost like the Olympics, isn't it? What's your name? And you're from Togiak? And what's your name? From these guys are here to compete, just like many, many others. Welcome to this generation. We'll be back with competition right after this. long throughout rural Alaska. Young people and their coaches have been practicing events that have been in existence for generations. Hundreds of years ago, the natives in rural Alaska turned everyday skills into athletic competitions as a fun way to stay in shape, and more importantly, to sharpen the skills necessary for survival. Remember the respect that is due to the man Many of the competitions are based on skills used for hunting and other subsistence activities. In modern times, all of the hard work that it takes to master events like the seal hop or the one foot high kick is done for one reason, to be an Olympic champion at the statewide Native Youth Olympics. We've been training kind of off and on since last semester, but we started training like hardcore about two months ago. Yeah. We've been going um, five days a week, every day, after school and in the evening. Well, it was alternating. We do practices in the after school and then some practices in the evening. And then about two weeks before we came to state, we did um, every day. number of villages gathered in Anchorage for the annual event. Hundreds of athletes, their coaches, parents, relatives, and well-wishers were on hand for the opening ceremony at the Wells Fargo Sports Complex at UAA. From Sitka to Barrow and all points between, the event was filled with the color and excitement that only an Olympic event can generate. It's so exciting you get um, adrenalized and you just overwhelming it's overwhelming the presence of all these people here and all the competition and it's uh, I can't explain it and just like that all the pomp and circumstance is over and the athletes take center stage if you've never seen native games before the events may seem a little confusing so to make sure everyone knows exactly what they're watching, a demonstration is provided to explain each event. The feet are flat on the floor. Athletes do not move until the judges tell you to. They'll measure and then you can walk away. The object here is to jump from your knees and land stable on your feet while achieving the greatest distance possible. If you do not land stable, your attempt is disqualified. This event requires physical strength and excellent balance.
As each event progresses, a team of judges carefully watches the athletes to make sure they are using the proper techniques and to very accurately measure each contestant's efforts. In many cases, these judges are former competitors in the events that they are now officiating. It takes a trained eye and a thorough knowledge of the rules to make sure each event is done properly. Any deviation from the rules could offer a competitor an unfair advantage or disadvantage. imagine this is the line if they pull them across they lose let's see this is the winner if i pull the person across he loses or if uh, this person here twists their leg in a way they lose it has to keep their their legs straight cool. each other and it keeps um, them out of trouble and physically fit. Last two years of high school, I competed. And after that, judge. If the person is pulled across the line or the belt that binds their feet together is pulled off by the competitor, then that competitor wins the match. The best out of three determines who will advance in the tournament. Eva Dixon from Teller, Alaska, was one of the top competitors to beat. Finishing up her senior year at Nan Edgecombe, Eva was hopeful that she would take home the gold this year at the 2003 Native Youth Olympics. From match to match, Eva gave the audience something to shout about as she pulled her way into the finals. It was looking good for Eva as she went head to head, or should I say foot to foot, with finalist Grace Ishmael from the Southwest Region School District. But Grace would have the upper hand, I mean foot, in this match. They had second in football. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. My senior year, I was hoping for gold. <laughs> I wanted to gold, but silver will do. In the boys' division, Grace Ishnook's brother, Theodore Ishnook, would take first place in the boys' football, keeping the gold in the family. <laughs> Traditional wisdom connects the scissors broad jump competition to hunters on the ice pack, the often slippery ice packs jumping from one ice floe to another as they traveled to their seal or walrus hunting grounds. Whatever the history, the event is challenging for the athletes and exciting to watch. On the one hand, Reach, we're looking for your form and your balance and your control. And then you got three, three attempts to hit each height at, at uh, four inch increments. In this event, the athlete's entire body weight is balanced on one hand as the competitor reaches up, touches the ball, and returns to a balanced position for three more seconds. All the ones that came to the state competition, they do have a lot of ability to compete. Uh, I mean, they're the best from their villages and from different towns. They go through uh, their, their trials 
which is called a preliminary against other schools and in their side of, side of the villages. And then they pick their best and come here and compete against Anchorage and the rest of the state. The events featured in this year's NYO competition have been practiced for years. Tradition is a big part of the Native Youth Olympics, but new skills are being explored all the time. At this year's games, there were demonstrations of Russian traditional games, and that had people thinking about future competitions. In fact, the triple jump is a Russian event that is now a part of the Arctic Winter Games and may someday find itself at NYO. It's called the Triple Jump, and it's a game that was introduced at Arctic Winter Games um, several years ago uh, from the, by the Russians. And they demonstrated it for a couple of games, and then the Inuit Arctic Sports event picked it up as their event. Additional demonstrations included a bottle jump and a kind of sumo American wrestling mix. Perhaps the most tiring event is what is known as the seal hop. In this event, participants rest upon their palms and toes, inching themselves down the court, much like a seal on the ice. The seal hop requires strong wrists, legs, and overall physical strength to take part in this event. Francis Lincoln of the Lower Kuskokwim School District managed to seal hop 126 feet, enough to take home the gold in this NYO event. The two-foot high kick was as popular as ever. The object, jump up with both feet, kick the ball, and land on both feet. Each time the ball is raised four inches and the remaining athletes compete for first place. At any Native Youth Olympic gathering, the one foot high kick is a crowd favorite. This year, as the competition progressed, it was obvious that the existing record was in jeopardy. One by one, the field was reduced until only the very best were still in the running. The one-foot high kick is an event that takes flexibility, good aim, and great balance. The object is to jump, kick the ball, and land on one foot while maintaining your balance. Each successful attempt means that the ball is raised another four inches for the remaining competitors. In the girls' division, Morgan Simpson of Fairbanks would take home the gold in this event with a top height of 84 inches. Throughout this three-day event, records were being matched and broken. Every year, the fierce competition lifts the athletes to new levels of excellence. In the one-foot high kick, John Miller of Barrow, Alaska, was a perfect example of this. As the competition narrowed down to just John and one other competitor, the crowd started to come alive, rooting both athletes on. While this competitor reached his maximum height, John still had room to go, and two more inches were added to his challenge. Now at nine feet or 108 inches, John was just two inches shy of tying the current Native Youth Olympic record that was unbeaten for 19 years. Adding another two inches, John was now focused on tying the 19-year-old record of 110 inches. It was almost as if gravity didn't exist for this young Inupiaq athlete. Having just matched the 19-year-old high kick record, John's next feat would be to set a new record for upcoming generations to beat. And on an inch-by-inch -inch basis, the ball was raised. 
with the greatest of ease. John kicked the ball each time, sending the crowd into a state of excitement that cannot be explained unless you were there. Now, at 9 feet 6 inches, John was going to attempt to tie the world record of 114 inches. This would be an amazing accomplishment if John was fortunate enough to reach this height. With the crowd on pins and needles, John would now try to break the world's record of 114 inches. With all of his might and whatever energy he had left, John tried but was unable to go beyond 9-6. It was a monumental moment for John and his family, as well as for everyone at the NYO event. I'm ecstatic. I'm very proud of my son. Very happy. We're happy that he could do it here in front of all his friends from around the state and that uh, a lot of people got to see it. It's a good day for him. It's a good day for everybody that came. I just thought I was going to kick about 9-3, I didn't think it was a little past this. We saw him kick over four inches in pra uh, during the Christmas game, so I knew he could kick 9-6. It was just a matter of timing and God's good grace. This year's Native Youth Olympics was a year of setting new records and personal goals. It was an event that tested the participants and proved once again that when you put your mind to it, you can accomplish just about anything.
purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below.